The big news in the financial markets. Larry Summers was widely seen as U.S. President Barack Obama's pick to succeed Ben Bernanke at the Federal Reserve. But the contest for the next top U.S. central banker took a turn on Sunday when Summers took him out of the running. The former Treasury Secretary said in a letter to President Obama that he was concerned about a potential bitter confirmation battle with the U.S. Senate. Summers said he would thought that he would not be in the interest of the Fed and the Obama administration or the U.S. economic recovery. Now, Summers' departures leaves federal uh, vice chairman Janet Yellen more or less the top choice along the top pick among the Fed chair's shortlist, but that race isn't over quite yet. There's a couple more. These contenders include ex-Fed vice chairman Donald Cohn, former Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner, and even though he's not that interested, he said publicly, there's also the possibility that Ben Bernanke will agree to stick along a little while longer. This is, of course, all speculation, and officials say an announcement will not happen this week. Now, for more on the nomination of the next Fed chair and outlook for the, this week's Federal Reserve meeting, which is in two days, Peter Schiff joins me now from Connecticut. He's the CEO and Chief Global Strategist at Euro-Pacific Capital. Um, good to see you again. Let me ask you, should we care that Larry's out of the running? I don't think it really matters, and I think marginally, I think Janet Yellen will be somewhat worse uh, than Larry Summers would have been. Uh, but the fact that the, the markets rallied today, theoretically, because maybe uh, Summers wouldn't quite be as easy on the printing press as, uh, as would Yellen, uh, I don't know that that would have been the case. But again, I, I, I think that Yellen is the worst possible choice of the, the candidates for contention, which is why I've been saying all along that she's going to get the nod. All right, let, let's, let's put biases aside here just, just shortly. Uh, some background here. The U.S. Senate had a group of senators on both sides of the aisle basically petition or write a letter to the president saying that they prefer to have Yellen over Larry Summers. The president, in turn, I'm sure talked to Larry Summers about it. He has now pulled out of the race. If the president chooses Yellen, does that mean that he perhaps succumbs somehow to the wishes of the U.S. Senate? Well, I mean, that wouldn't be the first time. I mean, obviously, there's some skeletons in the closet. He said some things that were politically incorrect and might have been more embarrassing to the president in a protracted confirmation hearing. You know, you got to pick your battles, I suppose, on your president. And he's picked so many, maybe this is one that he really couldn't afford to have. And so he, um, he most likely asked uh, Summers to bow out, uh, which Summers did. Two things about the Fed. We've got the big two-day meeting coming up. A lot of people are expecting a big announcement on whether or not they'll begin the tapering process of this $85 billion a month. And even if they don't do it, when it might actually happen. So my question to you is, if it's 5 or $10 billion or even $15 billion, as some suspect, does that change anything in your mind in terms of where this economy would go? No, it doesn't change anything. You know, I thought when the Fed first announced tapering that they had no intention of actually doing it. In fact, they made it data dependent. And all the data that has come out since the Fed did that has been negative. Clearly, the Fed's assessment of the strength of the economy was wrong. Yet it seems that everybody is anticipating that there will be some modest degree of taper anyway. So maybe the Fed feels like it's boxed in in that if it doesn't taper a little bit, uh, that it might scare the markets into believing that the Fed now appreciates just how weak the economy is. So I think they might try to have their cake and eat it, too, in that they just do a modest amount of, you know, taper light, and then they backtrack uh, by trying to uh, tell the markets not to expect any more anytime soon, uh, maybe even dial back uh, their, 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 their numbers on how, how low unemployment has to fall before they might uh, begin to raise interest rates. And again, all of this, you know, they used to talk about an exit strategy. Exit isn't even in consideration anymore. They're not talking about winding down QE. They're not even talking about stopping it. They're simply talking about reducing the rate at which the Fed expands its balance sheet. Do, do you think the Fed needs to worry about inflation? Is that a concern at all? Well, I worry about it. Everybody should be worried about it. But the Fed is counting on it. Inflation is its plan for reviving the U.S. economy. That's what quantitative easing is, a euphemism for inflation. The Fed thinks if it creates enough inflation, it's going to solve our problems. It won't. It's going to create bigger problems, and that's exactly what the Fed is doing. All right, quickly, um, 
a couple more Fed meetings to go for the end of the year. What do you expect to hear from the Federal Reserve that might be a surprise to all of us? I don't know what they're going to say that's a surprise, although I do think that it might surprise people when the Fed ultimately increases QE above the $85 billion a month it's doing now. Even if it tapers this week and does commit to reducing QE to $75 billion or $70 billion a month, it's going to have to come back and raise QE well above the $85 billion a month to maintain the artificial high that we have in the U.S. economy that is 100 percent the result of the monetary stimulus. And the more the Fed artificially stimulates the economy with QE, the more QE it takes to maintain uh, the high. And so if it tries to dial it back, it's not going to work. It's going to have to come back with more QE. The only thing that's going to stop the Fed is going to be a dollar crisis and a sovereign debt crisis. And I suppose the good news is that crisis is coming. All right. It's, uh, it's weird that we'll call that good news. But for now, it's always good to get your uh, analysis. Peter Schiff joining us from Connecticut on the Fed. Thank you very much.